Hello everyone, welcome to Lyft. We're so excited to have you guys here with us and we want to encourage you as we enter into a time of worship for you guys to make your space wherever you are, your worship zone. So if you want to stand, if you want to kneel before the Lord, do what makes you feel closer to God. And as we sing these songs, we encourage you to do the same.
I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry And I just sang another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry When I forgot that you're enough Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you Caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet Just gone through the motions, I'm sorry and I just sang another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you Lord, I'm sorry When I've come I'm sorry And I forgot the you're enough Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence And I just want to see
just the one. Hey guys, this is Don. Hey, I want to follow up the message that I gave you guys last Wednesday. Um, but today we're here in the inner sanctum. Yeah, so it could get really weird. I'm at the house of Skitty. My cat Esme may make an appearance too before this is all done. But I wanted to, to follow up. Last week I talked to you guys about maintaining the spiritual glow. And I want to follow up on that a little bit. Uh, some of the scripture that I read was uh, be fervent in spirit or maintain the spiritual glow. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Uh, those were just some scriptures. And Paul almost seemed to rattle them off as sort of uh, just sort of a, you know, by the way uh, kind of thing. Here, Esme. Come here, baby. Oh, this is my cat, Esme. Isn't she adorable? I love her. Anyway. Um, so, where do I pick up? Well, today, um, I want to encourage you to take it a little further, this idea of uh, let's make this time uh, during quarantine uh, as sort of a, a Sabbath rest, uh, sort of spiritual journey that we're on uh, with God, all of us at the same time. Um, I know for me personally, um, this has been, um, it's been really strange because Today, today, I'm supposed to be on an airplane right now, flying to Haiti. You know, um, before this thing happened, my schedule was so full. Had all my little ducks in a row, you know, getting ready for this Haiti trip. And, and honestly, you know, having to uh, cancel the gatherings of New Wine and Lyft, um, it's been really discouraging, disappointing. And the Haiti trip, we pr prepared for it um, for so long. And today should be on the plane, but we're not. Um, so, you know, I had to kind of get over the disappointment and begin to um, redo my schedule. Like, what are the, what's the work I need to be doing now? Uh, what are the things I can do to grow spiritually now? Um, all of that changed. I mean, my world was turned upside down. And so I just want to tell you, I, I know what a little bit about what you're going through. If there are some things that... Um, now are going to be really different and disappointing in your life. You know, we're, we're in this together. It's affecting everybody a little differently, but, um, but it, it's real. And um, so what I did was I began to plan different things uh, to focus on. And uh, that's what I want to encourage you to do um, as you prepare to go a little deeper in your your journey into God's presence and God's uh, truth through the Bible and and experiencing spiritual disciplines. So um, I know what you're feeling, and I feel there with you. And, uh, you know, uh, some of the scriptures that I read today, uh, Rejoice in Hope. You know, there's no reason for us to be really discouraged and depressed about this. You know, we, we deal with our feelings, we grieve our losses, and, and we move on. And, you know, hopefully we're going to get to go to Haiti in October. So, you know, it's going to be all right. Um, during this time, we certainly need to be praying. There are so many people that are in need. Uh, we can rejoice in hope. We can be patient in tribulation. That applies, right? Um, we can contribute to the needs of the saints. We can seek to show hospitality. There are people that have needs, as I'm going to discuss in a minute. But, um, you know, so anyway, I sat down and I made up a, uh, a pandemic routine, you know, a, a new schedule. Um, there are ways that we can grow through this time. Life is what you make of it. Um, I hope you heard uh, Josiah's sermon last Sunday because he talked about this a lot. It was really good. You need to check that out online. Um, so anyway, during this time, we can make more uh, of our time with God, with our Christian friends, um, with uh, our families, um, if, if we'll make it a purpose to do that. So take some time today. I want you to do this today um, to create a set of goals for your time, for your days. This is actually called um, creating a rule of life. It's a thing. You know, like there are books about it, uh, crafting a rule of life, 12 sessions for groups or individuals, 
uh, contemporary approach to St. Benedict's rule um, back in the monastic period. And uh, here's something more updated, the common rule, habits of purpose for an age of distraction. I mean, man, there are there are ways that we can grow that are exciting, stuff you may not have time to do uh, that you can do right now if you'll make that your purpose. So so a guide for how you will live your life, that's, that's what a rule of life is. Um, and so for the next month, how could you craft a rule of life? A real easy way to do it is just take a piece of paper, um, make a line vertically and horizontally like a big cross sort of and then each of those four sections you you uh, begin to brainstorm what you want to uh, to do daily weekly monthly yearly um, you can come up with quarterly it's kind of up to you this is a blank canvas for for each individual to sort of craft how they want to spend their time, including the big rocks, you know, including the things that are most important uh, so that you accomplish your goals, your dreams, you, you, um, you have purpose and um, direction in your life rather than just sort of being at everybody else's uh, beck and call with your time. So what are some things that you can do? Um, well, Daily, start there. What can I do daily? What's, what's my rule? How do I roll? You know, th this is my plan, my vision for my life for the next month, um, for this new month that we're starting in April, right? Well, you can have a morning routine. Every day we need to have a morning routine. You know, make it something that you actually look forward to. You know, like coffee. I mean, my morning routine where I'm, I stack some habits together, things I want to do to start my day. I like, for instance, reading scripture. You know, where do I want to spend the month of April in Scripture? Do I want to just master, like, uh, the Gospel of John or the Book of James? Do I want to memorize Scripture? Do I want to pray certain Scriptures? Do I want to become more familiar with the Psalms? Um, give thanks. That's another thing. I have time in the Word, time in prayer, and time just giving thanks. Thanking God for ten things, the things that you're really thankful for. We had a whole fall retreat one time where we were talking about awe and how that there's so much exciting stuff in life and uh, you can have an awful day or an awe-filled day depending on your attitude and for me that starts with giving thanks and beginning to look at all the things that I'm truly thankful for I mean if you look around my room here uh, I'm a nerd when it comes to some things like I like rocks I like books I like meteorites I like the stars I, those are things I find delight in the, the creation of God and um, anyway uh, there are things that give you joy and give you delight and put you in awe. And we need to be touching those things. You know what I mean? Like, like getting in touch with, with the, the amazing wonder of life and focusing on that rather than focusing on the things that can bring us down. So how you start your day, your morning routine is very important. Um, so, you know, uh, not praying for other people, that's a good time to incorporate that. And there's no better time than now with, with everybody really going through some stuff. Um, that's for sure. So uh, what other things can you do daily? I mean, besides your morning routine, you may want to have an afternoon plan, an evening routine. There are things that you have to do, um, but man, that can eat up everything to where it's like you're, you're, you're just sort of adrift rather than having a plan and a purpose. During this month, we could really accomplish some neat stuff. I mean, um, this Sunday morning sermon that's coming up um, is going to be really helpful in terms of, of uh, making sure you get out of life's trials the things that you can. It doesn't just have to destroy you. It can really build you up. Um, there's a lot of neat stuff that's going to come out of um, this time of self-quarantine. There really is. I mean, look at me. I'm already learning how to do videos. I've never had to do that. Um, look out, world, because once I know how to do this, you're really going to be in trouble because I'll be just like posting stuff all the time, weird stuff, crazy stuff. It's going to be an adventure. It really is. Who knows? I may get a SoundCloud, um, a blog. I mean, man, who knows what you could begin to do with your time if you have a plan to make it something constructive. I'm going to work on learning Creole, so when I go in October, I'm going to be like talking, like, you know, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, Mwen Bezwen, Ede, Apran Creole, something like that. <laughs>
Anyway, um, so uh, my plan today is not to tell you what you should do, but just to suggest that you should think, brainstorm, pray about it, talk with other, to other people about it, about some of the things maybe you've always wanted to do. Um, so anyway, throughout your day, your daily stuff, plan to maybe do something every day to serve others. You know, set aside some money each week to bless somebody in need. Um, call someone who might be lonely during this time, maybe one person a day. Anyway, you make a plan. It's your canvas. You paint on how you want. Um, and, you know, at the end of a month, it's hard to tell what we will have accomplished, what we will have become if we have this daily plan to deepen ourselves, to broaden out, you know, our, our scope. Um, weekly. Um, so in one section, you're going to write, this is my daily rule of life. This is how I'm going to roll in April every day. Weekly, what do you want to include? I want to encourage you so much to make sure you tune in every Sunday to listen to the messages that our pa teaching pastors are teaching because it's it's so good. This stuff is amazing and it's sort of dovetailing right along with what I'm telling you too on Wednesday nights, right? Um, and tune in every Wednesday night at 6.30. We're going to be meeting with you guys online, and I don't know where this will go, but it's amazing, man. Valerie's got some music. Um, someone's going to be having prayer. Someone else will be doing some of these talks besides me all the time, but, but it's just at least a way to connect, um, to interact, and anyway, do those two things weekly. Maybe there's something else you want to add. As far as monthly, I'm not going to even talk about monthly right now so much, but I'm going to encourage uh, the leaders, other leaders, maybe to post some ideas in our Facebook group about what a person might add that's a monthly thing that could be really cool. Here's one example, all right? What if, what if some of you guys decided, I'm going to read a book a month? Maybe some of you could read the same book. You're going to have like a book of the month reading club, learning some really cool stuff, and then maybe at the end of the month, you... You talk about it online. You FaceTime each other. Um, that could be a cool thing. Um, it could be a really cool thing and a helpful thing. Um, so anyway, you're making a rule of life. See, I told you last, last time that you should do this, but did you? Until you make it a plan, chances are nothing changes. And so I'm saying make a plan. Make a rule of life. And yearly, there are some things that you could do yearly. Like, for instance, summer camp. Uh, it's going to be July the 12th through the 17th, and we are going to be talking a fair amount about Bible prophecy, and I'm telling you, I'm seeing so much crazy stuff online. Some people are talking out of their heads, so don't let them discourage you or upset you. There are some people that are just really talking out of their heads right now. Um, you know, the government's trying to take over, the, the world's going to end. You know what? The Bible does talk about those things, and you need to be aware of that. If you don't know what the Bible even says about it, then when people start running their mouths about things, uh, and they're really obviously concerned, and you got to know what to make sense of that. You got to know, you know, is Jesus coming back next week? Um, or is like, no, you know what? Here's what this looks like. Um, I find that a lot of Christians don't even know what the Bible says about the time at the end when there will be earthquakes in diverse places and and so forth like that and the signs of the coming of Jesus Christ. We want you guys to know that. Um, you need to be informed. So, you know, summer camp is going to be awesome. And that's not the only thing we're talking about. It'll be a lot of other stuff. So if that's not something you care about, that's just part of it. Um, but you got to get that on your calendar and just be praying that we get to have a camp this year. This thing will blow over by then. But anyway, these are just some ideas. If you'll sit down with a piece of paper today and make a plan, actually begin to put into practice uh, some spiritual disciplines. Some other things we're going to do is we're going to uh, post some books in our Facebook group um, that if you're looking for a book to read, it would be really helpful. It would give you some ideas of things to try. Um, that would add a whole new dynamic to how you relate to God and to each other. Um, and uh, one last thing, I, I do want to really encourage you guys to spend time with your family um, purposefully. You know, this is something that may never come again. We may never have another situation like this again. And um, oddly enough, I think we should make the most of it. You know, I'm going to grow in ways that I would not have because of what's going on. Um, so anyway, I love you guys. Can't wait to see you. And um, 
Yeah, so this is it, the inner sanctum. This is where I have my coffee. This is where I do my morning uh, routine. Listening to some music, lighting a candle, um, opening up the word of God, just having a quiet time with him uh, and my cat. Uh, so find that way for you to begin to build a really amazing um, month of April. I'm going to pray for you guys. I love you. But right now, Nick has come to lead us in prayer. Okay. Well, guys, just wanted to let you know that we really miss you here at Lyft. Looking so forward to seeing all of you guys again and just really encouraging you to embrace this time and, and to really set your heart on God. So how about we all bow our heads and pray? Father, we come before you tonight in the name of your son, Jesus. And Father, as Pastor Don has laid out some of these ideas for us to begin to add into our lives, Father, I pray that you will give each one of us wisdom, Lord, to know how we need to structure our day. Lord, you know our rhythms and what time of days are best for us. So I pray, God, that you will help each one of us to develop this rule of life, God, and that we would begin to spend more time with you to really treasure and value that time and to guard that time. And Lord, to really be to appreciate our families and Lord, all that um, that we have, Lord, inside of our homes as well. Father, help us to serve each other well during this time, to be loving, to reach out to our friends and our family, God, however that might look, which is going to be a little different right now, but to really love and care for uh, the body of Christ. Father, I thank you so much for these young people. I thank you for their heart and for their dedication to serve you and to serve you well, Lord. And I pray that you'll continue to help them to grow in the grace and the knowledge of you, to really press in to know you more, Jesus, and um, to really seek you with all of their heart. Father, I thank you so much. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, and amen.
Hey guys, we want to thank you so much for all of you who participated in this past week's scavenger hunt. It was so fun to see all your pictures and we want to announce the winner now and that person is Trinity Martin. You were the first one to get all your pictures in and you did a fabulous job. So thank you so much. I will be contacting you with your prize um, by tonight or tomorrow. So this week's game is gonna be something called Photo Juke. Now the point of this game is to take a picture of yourself in a really weird location and then post another picture zoomed out showing where you took the picture. EJ is gonna post some pictures to give you some examples on what this looks like. The most creative person in the most creative place is going to be the winner of this competition. All right, remember, whoever wins gets a prize. We'll see you guys next week.